Hey everybody, this is Jennifer with Northwest Stamper, and I'm back today with another Walkthrough Wednesday for you. Um, I'm going to be doing this pinwheel card for you today. It was part of my Fancy Folds, Fun Folds class that I did earlier this week, and it was so much fun. I'll show you some of the other cards we did. I happen to actually have a couple extra kits if anyone wants those by mail. Um, I was offering this by mail as well as in person, so if you're interested, uh, check the my blog or check the um, notes for this video, and I'll have the details posted there. Um, but this was one of the first ones. This is a pop-out swing card. I love this card. It's so fun because it opens up. You have lots of space to write um, because it pops open. You can stand it up on your desk, and it's just kind of a neat little unexpected bit of flair, so I liked that one a lot. We did this one. Uh, it was by, let's see, Dawn Griffith is who I learned this from. And I just thought it was so neat because when you have it, it fits in an envelope, but it actually, so your standard size envelope. So that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And it just pops open to a cute little stand up card. You can have your information, your little sentiment and everything on the back. Um, I did this new watercolor um, wishes butterfly that I just absolutely adore. The catalog does not do it justice. But as you can see, I know this it's not a good showing because you're from above, but it stands up all by itself. So it can be something cute that you decorate. Imagine if you put a picture on there, how fun that would be for like grandmas or something. Super cute. Um, and then the last card that we did um, was this pinwheel card. Now um, this one here is what we're going to make today. It has belly band to hold it in, but as you can see, it doesn't actually need the belly band to hold it in place. Um, here's another paper. Uh, this is the farm stand paper, and this is the Merry Moments paper. It will probably, I'll probably have a caption because I do not remember what it is. So look on your screen. Whatever it says on your screen is what the paper is called. Um, and so as you can see, they hold up by themselves. Uh, they're a four by four card, uh, or four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Let's see. Let's measure four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Don't you love rulers? And they're called, I call them the pinwheel fold. That's why they're called because it looks like a pinwheel here. But the cool thing is, is it just opens like a box here. I should show you the interesting one. Um, that it opens kind of like a moving box and it gives you your sentiment inside. And it's all just one big piece of paper. So it's all about folding. It's not about cutting and gluing except for what you're doing to decorate. Um, the trickiest part is getting it folded closed correctly. So that's what we'll spend some time making sure you have down pat. So to get started, what you need is you need an eight by eight piece of paper. This is from that holiday paper pack. Um, pick the side that you want to be on the inside. So what you want to be on the inside of their flaps when they open up, also known as what you want the little pinwheel pattern to be. Um, in this case, I'm going to use my, let's see, this is how I tell what I want. I sort of fold one side over. I was like, does that look better? Or does that look better? I think let's do Let's do the green on the trees on the inside. So we'll put that face down so your trees go face down. We're using the your scoreboard. This is the uh, stamp, Stampin' Up! Simply Scored. Um, but you're going to want the diagonal plate on here so that it has the lines that go to the side, not straight up and down to the side. Um, and if you flip it over on the back, you can kind of see, hopefully you can see up here is a little arrow. It's only on there. It's not on this side. So it tells you that arrow says when you put it in here, put it all the way and slide it and it'll be perfectly centered. So we'll put our piece of paper in. I've put my little um, flaggy guy that comes with, I forget what they're called, they're little pointers. You get three of them with the Simply Scored and they fit in these grooves so you don't have to think, you don't have to look at your numbers. So I just put it in here at the three. So now I can take my stylus. You'll, I think when you're using pattern paper, you're better off to use the fat tip, not the skinny tip, because this is prone to rip if you use the a lot of pressure, especially with the skinny tip. So be gentle, use the fat tip, and come over here, start where your pointer is and start in the groove that um, corresponds to the three right here. So start down and then just gently start to go sideways. You'll feel it stick. So you can see I just moved there a little bit by accident. So you just sort of start back over here. This is why I say go kind of slow. You'll get a feel for it as you go along and just do this on each side. So I'm gonna do three. Turn it 90 degrees. I'm going to do my three again, which my pointer is being a little silly there. So just score that down and then keep going on the last two sides. 
Okay, now once you're done scoring all their sides, you'll find that your lines have crossed each other. Now I've tried to be helpful and mark sort of what those little triangles look like where they cross. And what you're gonna need to do next is just cut those out. You don't need them and they are just going to be uh, important to cut away so that we can make our flaps full. So let's just go through and we'll cut out all four sides. So this is what it should look like when you're all done with your cutting. I've just cut out each of those triangles where the score lines overlapped. Now we're going to go back to our scoreboard. We're going to take away the diagonal plate. We're not going to need it anymore. Um, and now what you'll do is flip it over and put it on here. And we are going to take our stylus again and we're going to start at the one inch line and go down to this point. And it should pretty much line up. So one inch down to the center point, just on the top one, not the bottom, just top, rotate, and do that again for all of your four sides. This is what's going to make it much easier for those little pinwheel trim pieces to fold down as we're just scoring that. And then once that's done, we can put away our scoreboard. We don't need it anymore. And now we're going to fold all of our crease lines. So fold back your tab, since we said that this was gonna be our trim. As we just go along, fold those down. Um, if you have a bone folder, that'll help make them nice and crisp, which is good for the card when you're folding it later. And once you have these, you're gonna take and fold these guys back. Okay, so now you have all of those pieces It should look like this on your inside, it should look like this on your outside, everything is nicely folded. Now I have some inside pieces so that you can decorate the inside. So we have a four and an eighth square and a four by of black, so it's four and an eighth black, four by four of white so that they nest nicely and those will nest nicely in the center. Now I realized I pulled out the Amazing Birthday set because that's what I was using um, with this, but since I'm using different paper, I don't know if happy birthday is quite the right sentiment. So I may hold off on putting this. This was just using this really cute um, amazing birthday stamp set and the happy birthday stamp. And I just grabbed my markers, my stamp and write markers, and I colored straight onto the rubber. So I just took this, um, popped off the paintbrush side, and just scribbled right on here with all of my colors. So I did green, yellow, green, yellow, then I took my black, colored on there, and stamped. Now, like I said, this feels more not as birthday to me, so I think I'm gonna wait and I'll do a different sentiment. So instead, we'll just adhere these layers together and I'll stamp on it later, and we'll put it on the inside of our card. So once you've had it all glued in here, it should all fold up nicely around your base. Um, if your score lines were a little off or you had, um, when you glued this down, it was over a little bit on one side. You might have to sit and go around one more time just to make sure it folds nicely. So now let's fold it up and then we can work on our belly band. So here's the trick. This is the one area you want to pay attention to. Now to get it to fold correctly, start with one side, doesn't matter which one, and fold it up. So put it here, we folded it up. So we have our trim and our flat side. So the side that is not the trim here, you're gonna turn it so that it faces down and then you're gonna fold up the next piece so it makes a T with your trim. Now find your piece that's not trim, turn it down, then fold up the next one, made another T, take the side that's not trim, turn it over and fold up your last piece. Now this doesn't quite look right because we've lost that piece of trim, but what it does when it covers that up for that last time is you know this is where I need to tuck him under. So set it down on your, on your table and then I find it easiest to sort of lift this one a little while I tuck and bend the flap that needs to go underneath. So lifting it really helps. And then you can kind of maneuver this guy in here, slide it all in and you may have to sort of adjust them a little bit. Slide them in and then take your bone folder and just go around and make sure everything sits nicely. Cause they may sort of try to puff up depending on how everything went together. So now you have your cute pinwheel card. It's all good by itself, but let's do a little belly band. So you're gonna start with a one inch by one inch by 11 inch piece of paper. Now I saw this project by Donald Chesky, and so she had talked about scoring it at three and a half and folding. 
um, which was a great idea. I just did not do that in advance. And so we're just going to fold and run with it. Now, when you do your initial fold, I do recommend doing it along the bottom, one of the edges, because it's a little bit fatter of paper here than through the middle. So you know it's going to slide up and down easily. So I just start near the bottom. I take one side, put this about in the middle, and we're going to fold one side over. And then we're going to take our other side and fold it to meet. Now when I do that, I'm actually leaving a little bit of a bubble. So I'm sort of gapping it. I don't know if I can bend it so you can see, but I gap it here just a little, just to make it a little bit easier to slide. So I have it bubbled, bubbled up a little, and then I'll take my bone folder and just push it out just to make sure I get some good spacing and I know it will fit. So now, once you've had that folded over so they meet, normally I would say use the fast fuse. That is my favorite for things that are gonna be pulled and have tension. Um, unfortunately, I managed to have misplaced mine at my class last, so instead I'm gonna show you a new thing that is by Stampin' Up! as well. This is Tear Tape. It is also your really good friend for boxes and things. This is your um, much easier replacement for sticky strip, and the reason why is because you can put it along here, set it down, and instead of having to cut, you can just rip away and it tears, which is awesome. Makes it so much easier to deal with um, than the sticky strip. Now, I don't know that I trust that this holds quite as strong as the sticky strip. Um, when you really need the strength than I would for heavy, heavy duty stuff, I would still probably go with the fast fuse. Um, but this is a really good second choice. Um, and there are some cases where, like this, where you want it to be strong, but it's not like people are going to be yanking or anything, then this works just great as well. So we're just going to fold it over, line them up, and press. And then you will have your cutie little belly band here. Um, it looks like I made mine a little tight, but that's okay. So you can slide him on. So he'll cover up your pinwheel a little, but that's okay. Um, for the rest of it, again, what I did is I took a piece of Sahara sand, and I used the bracket label punch here to punch out a fun little back piece and then I took I was using the amazing birthday again I was using it's the it's for you surprise is also really fun and this would work for Christmas because the great thing is this is perfect for putting a gift card in because the gift card isn't gonna fall out so that's awesome as well so I took oh heck we're just gonna use these colors because they're what I have my mossy meadow and my hello honey um, and so what you're going to do is I'm gonna fill in the center with my hello honey and I'm just coloring on. Now when you color with markers, you may have heard me say this before, um, don't color point down um, because it'll just destroy the tip of your marker. Kind of go at it from the side, bend it sideways as you're coloring. So there is my Hello Honey. Here's my Mossy Meadow. These are both in colors. They're the 2014 to 2016. So they're in their last year. So they'll be around um, for a while. They'll be around till next uh, May may as when you have so you have a little bit of time they're in the same family as the blackberry bliss um, and lost lagoon that everybody is just dying over which is awesome so huff like you're um trying to fog up a mirror and then stamp and if you haven't heard about that huffing before it's just to make sure if any part of this ink has dried that you make sure you re-moisten it before you stamp now we're taking our one and a quarter inch punch yes this is the old whale tail style um, but if it works, no need to fix it yet. So we punch that puppy out, and then we're just going to add him to our Sahara sand piece with a Stampin' Dimensional. Maybe two if you're feeling um, excited. Stick him on here, and then you're going to just put two-way glue, or not two-way glue, tape runner. What am I talking about? Just down the middle. If you're um, even smarter, you would put it on the belly band instead of here. Um, I apparently am not there right tonight. So press, and you have a cute belly band with decoration for your card. It's really easy to do. The most complicated part is actually just getting those folds down, um, but it is really fun. You can use it with any paper you want and make it for presents, make with gift cards, make it for a great sentiment, put photos in there, super fun. So. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you liked these ideas. Again, I have a couple kits left if you want to be able to have all the pieces pre-cut um, for putting these together um, at home. It's um, on my blog and I will be happy to hook you up. 
So thanks so much for stopping by for this Walkthrough Wednesday. I will be back next week with more fun projects for you. Take care and happy stamping.